Installing OBS can be confusing, and streaming isn't meant to be confusing. It is meant to be fun, right? Today, you'll go from having nothing set up to having this awesome overlay set up and understanding how to customize and control every single thing you want, including the dreaded audio. When you first install OBS, you'll most likely either have a blank slate, or maybe you've already played around a bit, or even installed a template overlay from a website. For this, I want you to start with a blank slate. So come to the top of OBS, click this little drop down that says Scene Collection, and click New. Once it opens, name this one whatever you want. I'm going to name mine today, Subscribe. This will add a new blank setup. If you want to swap back, go to the same process you did, but don't click on new and instead click on the overlay in your list. Don't worry, everything I've done so far hasn't deleted all your work. Okay, let's give you a quick tour of OBS. And yes, don't worry, I'll deep dive into everything. But first, you need to know your way around. In the middle, you have your display window. This is what you'd be broadcasting to Twitch if you were live right now. But right now, it's blank, obviously. Unlike other tools such as Streamlabs or Twitch Studio, OBS doesn't come with event lists so you can't see your new follows or new subscribes, or a chat window even so you can't even see your chatters. But don't worry, we'll set both of these up later as docs and they'll be on your left and right just like any other tool. Below that we have four boxes. On the far left we have scenes. You'll set up different scenes for different reasons. For example, you'll need a scene for gaming, a scene to say you're going be right back, or a scene for just chatting to your viewers. If we had those three scenes set up and clicked between them, then we would be transitioning. More on that later. In the middle, we have sources. These are the assets you have added to the scene you have selected. On the right, we have the mixer. These are your audio sources that will be transmitted out and you can control and edit your audio from here. Further to the right, we also have our scene transition controller. This lets you set up stingers and animations for transitioning between scenes. And then on the far right, you have controls. This lets you start stream, start recordings, turn on studio mode, and of course, open your settings. And that is really everything you need right now for getting set up. The rest will be covered throughout the video, but I will quickly mention if you're wanting to learn about streaming settings in particular and how to avoid laggy streams, well, there is a playlist in the description that has a video about fixing laggy streams and making sure your stream settings are crystal clear. So I will show you how to install alerts, chat widgets, and fix your audio in only a few seconds. But first, let's cover the basics. On the left, we have scenes, as I said you'll make your scene for different purposes. For example, you'll make a game scene. So we right click and name game scene. Now I might be setting up a gaming scene, but I'll cover everything you need to know to build any scene you want. Think of this as building blocks. In the middle, we have sources. Sources are again, all of your media that are in the scene you currently have selected. Right now it's empty, but if we click this plus sign at the bottom, we can add sources such as game capture, which you'll need if you're trying to capture a game in your gaming scene. If you don't have a game open, it will be blank for now, but don't worry about it. And also it's important to remember that not every game will be captured in this. Some games need window or display capture to actually be captured. So you might have to try different options. But anything you want to add to a scene, you'll do it with this plus sign. That could be video graphics, or it could be still images, or it could be any of the dozens of widgets you'll add with browser sources. For example, we also want alerts. So if someone follows while you're live, an alert plays on screen. Unlike Streamlabs, OBS doesn't come with alerts, but with Twitch alerts, you can set these up in 10 clicks. Or if you're on YouTube, you can use stream elements. For Twitch alerts, head to your Twitch dashboard, click alerts, create alert box, name it, click edit alerts, and then in the bottom right, copy this browser source URL. Come back to OBS, click the plus, click browser, name it alerts, and then paste the copied URL I showed you into the URL box. Click save, and now if you click send test alert, you'll see you have all the default Twitch alerts set up. There's a full video in the description on customizing these alerts. For now, that's the basics, let's move on. Your game scene will probably also need a webcam, maybe some support bars for your latest follower or latest subscriber, and potentially you'll also want your chat on screen. First, let's start with the webcam. Let's click the plus again and click video capture device. We'll then select our webcam and then resize it down by clicking the corner and dragging it down. Now the source list isn't a random order, it's actually layers. Imagine the bottom layer is behind everything else. So if I drag my webcam below my game capture, it is hidden. If you can't see a source, it's worth considering whether or not it's placed in the right section of your list. Now I wanna add my support bars that the name of my latest follower will appear in. So I will click the plus and I can either click image if my support bar graphic isn't animated, or I can click media source if it is an animation or a video file. All of the graphics I use in today's video are available for free for download from the Discord server linked in the description. I think we have about three to four dozen fully animated overlays in there now just for free. So you can have those if you want. My support bars are animated. So I click media source. I'll find my animated bars file on my computer and I will add them in here. 
Since they are animated, I also need to make sure I double click my support bar layer so the settings open and then I'll click loop or else it will stop playing after the animation finishes. Any animation you want to keep playing forever needs loop turned on. This process is also how you can import a frame for your webcam or really any other graphic. But first, we want to add our follower name to our support bars. The issue is OBS doesn't come with label widgets built in, making it a little bit tricky. Instead, you'll have to use stream elements to add these. Don't worry, it's actually really simple once you do it once. So you'll head to streamelements.com, you'll log in and connect your Twitch or YouTube account if you're streaming there, click streaming tools on the left at your dashboard and click new overlay. Set your overlay's resolution to the same size as your OBS. If you don't know what that is, you can check this in the settings, video, and it's the base canvas. So for us, it's 1080p. You're gonna click the plus and click add static slash custom. Click video and then in the top right, click change video. Upload and you'll upload your support bar file from your computer. The reason we are adding this support bar graphic again, but now on stream elements is because it will be far easier for us to add the label to fit the bar if we do it all in one place, rather than adding a label to elements and then trying to make it fit in OBS. Click the plus sign again, click labels, follower, latest follower, and you'll see it's been dropped in here. But then if you click it, you'll be able to edit what it says up here in the top left. You can change the font. You can change the size of the font. You name it, you can do it here. Our overlays actually come with custom fonts that match the design. So for example, this is the paint splatter pack. So I'll set this to blow brush so it looks a bit like it's someone spray painting. I'm going to turn on dynamic font size so I can resize it onto the bar and I'll add a little drop shadow to it. Now, I know I went through that a bit quick, but stream labels are simple to add and really powerful. Even just opening the drop down, you can see dozens of other types of labels. And if you want, in the playlist linked in the description, I have a stream labels tutorial that covers everything you need in about nine to 10 minutes. This video would go on far too long if I did a deep dive into labels now. So instead, I'm showing you the basics so you can get going and the other video can help you become a pro later. Once you've positioned your label and you're happy with it, you'll click save, you'll name it, and then click this little chain to copy the URL. Head back to OBS, hit the plus, select the browser source and paste this in just like you did last time. But extra step, change the width and height to match what you set your canvas resolution and overlay resolution. So remember mine was 1080p. So I'll set this to 1920 by 1080p. For you, make sure it just simply matches your base canvas. Now, what if I don't like where my bars have fallen naturally and I wanna move them all to the bottom of the screen? Well, I can. I just click and drag that source all the way down and it moves everything because I'm simply moving the stream elements overlay I made and imported. But LJ, now we're left with two support bars. Don't worry, I did that on purpose so I could show you guys how to delete a source. If you go down to your source list, click it and click delete. But if I wanted to move my webcam and its frame that goes around it, I can click and drag each one individually to move them. But a much easier and neater way is to select both my graphics and hit the plus button, then add a group source and drag all the sources into one folder named webcam. I can then click the group and move that around and it will move everything inside it. Now we do hit a snag. We have about three to four support bars on our screen. And yeah, you could use these other bars for things like new donation labels or new sub labels. But if you wanna get rid of them or crop anything inside OBS, you can just by clicking on the source, holding down alt, and then dragging it to resize from the vertical or horizontal boxes. Personally though, I will say if we're resizing or cropping sources that come from stream elements first, I prefer to simply crop and resize it there on their overlay editor because then it loses less quality when scaling it up inside OBS. This whole drag also works with every other source and specifically when it comes to resizing your camera. Sometimes you want a square camera inside your game to block less of the gameplay. So if we import this square webcam frame that comes optional with all of our overlays and lay it over our webcam, we can then hold Alt and we can drag the camera source to be a square and it will fit inside the box nicely. The last step of our game scene, let's add chat to your screen. You'll need to head back to stream elements and follow the same process as earlier and make a new overlay. You don't want your support bars and chat in the same overlay. Once you have your new overlay, hit the plus sign and click stream tools, then click the chat. It'll add the default chat box most likely, and it doesn't look great. So at the top left of the properties, you can change the height and width to change the size of the box, but also it has some presets of chat styles. Personally, I prefer setting it to custom so I can remove the hard background. And then if you click text settings, you can change the font, add drop shadows, and well, really anything you want. 
Once we're done, we'll copy the browser source and then paste it as our new browser source in OBS. And just like earlier, we're going to make sure that the browser source matches the resolution of the overlay resolution that we set. And now let's put this chat box below our camera and our followers. Type something in Twitch chat for the tests and make sure it is below your camera in the source list. So now that it scrolls up, it'll go under your camera nicely. It just looks nice and smooth this way. Congratulations, you have a game scene set up. Now let's go back to our scene list and make a just chatting scene. We're gonna hit the plus on the scene list and name it just chatting and then hit OK. And with that, all our work is gone. Oh my God, what have we done? It, just kidding, it isn't actually gone. It's just in another scene. If you click the game scene, it will transition back to that one we just set up. Now, you might not want to transition every time you select a new scene. So what do you do? Well, you click on studio mode on the bottom right. And now when I click game scene, it shows me the game scene on the left and I can click transition and it moves to the right. What is shown on the right is being broadcasted out and what is showing on the left is the preview of the scene that you're looking at transitioning to. You can go ahead and set up your just chatting scenes however you want. It is the same process as your game scene. Just hit the plus and insert the source that you're trying to add. For me, I recommend adding your webcam as a full screen or at least quite large. You can add your chat to one of the sides and don't forget to add your alert box as well so you can hear when people follow in this scene. You can just copy and paste most of this from the game scene and then resize it. But if you want chat alert, or other browser sources to look and be different between scenes well then you need to set up a new overlay on elements or twitch alerts and then add the new browser source it's the same process as i showed you earlier though but you can see the difference here my game scene my chat is small and fits under my camera but in my just chatting scene it's really large these are two different resolutions and two different sources from elements you'll see on my chatting i decided to make my camera full screen and put the chat largely on the side with my alerts in the bottom of the other corner I just find this is a really nice default just chatting setup and I do recommend it for everyone. Once you have that, let's add some polish to our transitions between your scenes. So let's quickly add an animation to this transition rather than this weird fade. Head to the scene transition section in the bottom right, click the plus, change it to stinger and now you want to find the stinger file on your computer. Remember every graphic in today's video is downloadable in the stream scheme discord. So once you find it, import your video file, make sure you use a WebM for the video stinger, change this from time to frame, and then set the transition point to 30. This is what fits the animation I am using, but you can adjust when the transition point is, moving it further or back until it fits yours. Then hit done. And make sure this drop down menu says stinger, hit done, and click between your two scenes, Ta-da, you've got a new transition. This is the global transition, so that means it will play every time you change scenes. But if you wanted, you could add custom rules for this transition. If we click on just chatting, right click, transition override and click cut. Now, if we click to transition, it will play the global stinger. But if we click back, it will hard cut to the scene we just set to the override. Look, this gets overly complicated fast. And if you are in need of multiple transitions for different scenes, I don't recommend using the override. I recommend a plugin called Transition Table. For now, I prefer using just one singer and one hard cut, depending on which scene I'm going to, so we don't overcomplicate it. Plus, I also have a video where I show off literally 50 plus free animated stingers and how to get even more custom with your stingers. It's in the playlist linked in the description, and they're all downloadable, again, from the Stream Scheme Discord. Now, before we move on to audio, maybe you didn't want to set every source up by hand. Maybe we just want to set up a template overlay and then use everything I just taught you to customize it. Well, sadly with OBS, there is no simple way to do this. You'll need to make a series of scenes and then install all of the sources by hand as I've shown you. The best I can offer is the fact that we have about two dozen, three dozen fully animated overlays in the Stream Scheme Discord. So at the very least, you can take those and build an overlay you love with all these modular animations. Everything you've learned so far though is the building blocks to becoming a pro at OBS. If you can do everything I showed you, then you can build an entire overlay if you're patient and take it one step at a time. Plus, if you need further help with our overlays, an install guide is linked in the playlist and we have a list of frequently asked questions in the Discord as well and about eight volunteers to help out and get you set up. Okay, let's cover the mixer over here on the right. Let's select our game scene. Now on the right, you'll see that your audio sources are anything that you have in that scene. This could be media files like animations. It could be widgets. Really, it's just anything that's in there. It might even be your webcam. We're going to focus on just three audio sources, our desktop audio, our mic aux, and our game capture. These might not be on your OBS yet. Don't worry, they will all be there soon. First, I want you to click on the three dots on the bottom of the mixer and click set to vertical. 
I find this just makes it look neater. And then we're going to hide anything that isn't one of those sources I just mentioned. You'll do this by clicking the three dots under a source, let's say the webcam, and then click hide in mixer box. Now it's cleaned up, let's add your mic and desktop audio. We'll click on the settings in the bottom right and below output, you'll see audio. So click audio. And then I want you to click your mic aux one and select your microphone in the dropdown. Now these will all be named differently, but it should say your brand of microphone or something like USB mic. Be careful not to leave this as default because it might default to say your webcams microphone or something else that picks up audio on your computer, which will likely sound awful. In the same area, I want you to select desktop audio and click default. This will capture all desktop sound and anything that plays through your default sound output on your PC. If it isn't capturing all of that, then you'll need to try a few different options till you find one that is. There are more complex ways to set up audio capture, but I find this is a really good place for a beginner to start. So once we've got those two things added, we'll head back to our mixer. And if we talk into the mic that's being picked up on these bars, your bars for your microphone should be hitting the top of the yellow and a tiny bit of the red, but no higher. And any audio that we can hear on our computer is usually being picked up by our desktop audio. So if we're playing music that is being picked up there, playing a game, it should be there as well. And if we send a test alert to our alerts, they'll be here as well. To mute our microphone or desktop audio, we click this little button here on screen. And to lower the volume, you can click and drag the actual level on your screen as well. The final step here is that you'll want to click the cogwheel in the bottom and open advanced settings. On the right, you'll see audio monitoring. If it says monitor off, it means you can't hear this source out of OBS, but your viewers can. If you have monitor only, it means that only you can hear it and OBS isn't transmitting it. And then monitor and output means that not only are you listening to the source from OBS, but you are also outputting it. Now, remember though, if you monitor something, say your microphone to listen back to it, but your desktop audio is also being captured, then you'll transmit that because you can hear your microphone which causes a double up. So make sure you're not monitoring your microphone at all times. Now, if you want to deep dive into audio, specifically one that lets your mic sound amazing, that is also in my playlist linked in the description. I made a $10 USB mic from a grocery store sound pretty damn good with absolutely zero plugins, no extra cost. I'm, I'm really proud of that video. But for now, that is the basic setup done and you are ready to start streaming. Almost. We need to add event lists and chat to OBS so you can actually see when someone follows or chats easily. Now, personally, I prefer to open my Twitch dashboard or YouTube Stream Studio dashboard and just have them here on another monitor. But I know everyone is different, so we will give you a few options instead. First, head to the dock, click Custom Browser Dock, and now you'll type in dock name, Twitch chat. Leave this open and head to your Twitch dashboard and then click the three dots on your Twitch chat and click Pop Out. Now copy the URL of this pop out and paste it into the URL of the doc that we had open. You'll need to log into Twitch now, but once done, OBS will have that chat window as a doc that you can move around and slide right into OBS if you just hold it over the section here. You'll do the same process, but this time using the activity feed and drop that on the left. Now you can see chat, your latest followers, latest subs, and you can see what you're transmitting, your scenes, your sources, your audio, and your stingers all in one place. The final tip of this video is to remember this guide has taught you the basic building blocks and provided a full overlay to build. If you follow along step by step, you'll be able to build an overlay and master OBS. But that's only if you didn't take shortcuts and tried to skip through the video. Now click this video here to fully customize those alerts we added earlier, or this video here to fully customize your stream labels and your support bars. And I'll see you guys next week.